All right, huh, cool. A double hit A1, that is a chance to place Provoke and a skill that places a shield. All, all allies based on this champion's defense. What a fun and unique kit. Haven't seen anything like this in a long... Please tell me this guy is being sarcastic. Ally protect and strengthen and nothing and strengthen and nothing else is a legendary champion ability. Weak affinity to champs like Wukong and Ragash. A2 doesn't synergize with passive and arbiter teams. Boring champion, useless without arbiter on the team unless multipliers are crazy. Even if multipliers are crazy. Even if arbiters on the same team. I don't know. This guy says, I'm really confused by this kit. Zero concept of where this champion should be used. Exactly, that's what I was saying. Maybe arena defense? Maybe. Other than that, the specific forced arbiter synergies? That's exactly what it is. Specifically forced arbiter synergies. I'm not seeing these two well, uh, play well together. Arbiter wants a fast attack based team. Incarnate does not fit that. Exactly. He doesn't. Uh, she doesn't fit, fit that. On one hand, this seems like an easy skip. Good or bad, that's true. Doesn't have a defined place in the game to play. No way I'm letting this champion anywhere near my Lego books. That's the other thing. How many books did it take? How many books is it going to take? Right? I'm not putting any books in. If I, if I even... If I pull this champion for free, quote unquote, one day, I'm not going to put any books in her. I don't, you know, it's just whatever. On the other hand, we haven't seen playtests or multiplier info. If Incarnate hits like a truck, well, at least that is something. But again, if you have like a bunch of nukers, you don't really need another nuker. Because you're going to get to a point where you just have so many nukers, there's no point. Wait, they expect to do a Brogni type fusion for this champion? Easy skip. Yeah, am I reading this wrong? She's mostly effective at saving the Arbiter on your team. If no Arbiter, then just an Ally Protect champion. Exactly. Low level accounts will find her Ally Protect and Strength and great for CB. Other than that, she'll be good in Arena teams-ish. Can't wait to open more. Corporate needs you to find the difference between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. You guys saw it. Pulling all those rares. Upcoming, we just talked about that. 12 Death Knights. Every single one in stone skin. If you set up silly arena defense teams like this, just know that I love you. I'm, I'm down for this. I like this. Yeah, it's a troll team. But still, I, I think it's fun. <laughs> Look, all of them are in stone skin. That's how you know you've been playing for a long time. You just get bored and start putting out troll teams. How's your artifact enhancement going, fellas? <laughs> I'm low on silver myself. Anniversary gift for three days. What are your guys' thoughts on this? I think it's a, it's a nice gift. But I also feel like they always have an anniversary going on. Duchess Lilitu 3D Sculpture. A 3D Sculpture for Mommy? You know what's crazy? I'm so used to seeing everybody around me in like my clans. And most people I talk to on Discord. I'm used to seeing them have duchesses. That whenever I hop an account, hop on an account, I'm like, well, why don't you just use Duchess? But I always forget not everybody has Duchess. Hey, look at this cock. Nubkicks was the one that was like, hey, look at this cock. Uh, Nubkicks did a video on him, a video on him. Scratch did a video on him, and I think I saw Scratch use him putting up billions of damage, right? And they nerfed him? Is that what happened? Three years for one Duchess? Yeah. It was about the same for me, to be honest. And now I have three Duchesses. Go figure. Oblivion recruitment. Is OBV always recruiting? Recruiting? I always see them recruiting. Any new promo codes for the 15th? Bend over. I'm going in dry 2024. <laughs> that didn't work for me. <laughs> Who should you six star next? Have any of you guys figured out a use for Adeline? Who should he six star next? I mean, probably Annika, right? This looks like a relatively new mid game account. Depending on what he's doing, I don't think he's hitting the higher levels of, of clan boss. I'm thinking probably Whisper. Start getting a DPA or Anax. I mean, you can't go wrong with either of them, I think. Damage dealer for clan boss. You do have Demitha. Another clan boss option. Eris, clan boss option. Oh, the Makage fusions he's getting together. Yeah. That's probably where I'd be at. Bendición para Demeta se ve. So, um, in español, bendición, bendición is uh, blessings. So he's asking for what what blessings you should use for uh, Demita. Entonces, 
Vamos a... I'm just kidding. What blessings would you guys recommend for Demitha? I've actually never used Demitha. So I don't know what blessings I would use. Does anybody know? Anybody have any ideas for what blessings? And he posted this a while ago, but I think because it's in Spanish, I think this Reddit, most, most, of, the, most of the people here are Anglophones. Yeah, I don't know uh, what blessing to put on Demitha. Probably something like cruelty, the, like the, the defense reducing things. Yeah, exactly. Cruelty, exactly what you said. That's probably the best option. Me gusta panocha. ¿Qué es panocha? I got a stone skin piece that rolled a quad. It rolled a quad, but it's stone skin and it has a quad res on it. Oh, by the way, thank you for the guide about the optimizer. Help me big. Yeah. I'm glad that helped you. Uh, I it was it was in the middle of me playing another game and uh, MB hit me up. He was like, "Hey, uh, can you do me a solid?" And I was like, "I'll do you one better. I'll teach you how to fish." And so I put that guide out. It was a quick one, and I only made it quick. I didn't want to go too in depth about it, just because I I wanted to get back to my game. Bomb champ glove, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm glad it helped you, June. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking initially, right? Somebody like Mommy. No, her name's not Mommy. What's her name? War Mother. I was thinking somebody like War Mother or Lord Shazar. He'd be pretty cool putting him in stone skin. The quad is on res. So I don't know how that would work. And people were... A lot, I got a lot of people saying to, to rework this. To use uh, the ore and rework this. But what do you guys think? And I'm, I'm ambivalent about doing it. Because Chaos Ores are not easy to, to come by, right? Chaos ores are not easy to come by unless you're buying them or you're just really fucking lucky. But I have a strong feeling I'm going to get messed if I try to reroll this. They need substat ores, exactly. Just do it. I have two Gaiuses and stone skin. I would slap that shit. Two Gaiuses and stone skin? With res? With quad res on it? And, like, I have nothing wrong with these, because these are technically, like, perfect stats, right? Speed, HP. Like, these are all percentages. The res, I'm not against the res, but you just leave it. In its current form, it's only the primary that's useful. Rework for sure. Fitzpatrick says rework. Synth, what do you think, man? Should we rework this? And you guys know why they make it so difficult for Chaos Ors? To, for, for players to get Chaos Ores. The reason why they make Chaos Ores so hard to do, and the reason why they only give you one re rework attempt, is so that Whales and Krakens, and in fact just the entire player base, has to spend more energy and time farming for gear. They don't want anybody to just get whatever, whatever um, stats that they want, because if that were the case, then the need to farm would significantly diminish in my opinion so they, they cap it at one rework attempt what if you rework and you get quad speed yeah that's the other thing what if i keep it to be honest or crit damage with quad me like you res yeah but attack percent i don't like attack percent to begin with i don't like attack percent gloves attack percent well, here's the other thing, guys. Here's the other context. I don't use bomb champions. I don't use bomb champions at all. All of my nukers, Kandrophon, Baron, Harima, Cupidus. Uh, Cupidus is mostly for, for uh, Hydra, but Rhonda, Eryx, Georgid, Sun Wukong. I mean, this is more of like a, a hybrid Wukong. Ragash, uh, Rhodos, you know what I mean? Leorius, Inithui. I don't use your, uh, your Carl um, Hefrak. Like, it's, they're not going to benefit from attack percent gloves over having crit damage gloves. You know what I mean? Definitely rework, then roll the dice. Hey, what's up, Ariel? How are you enjoying the account, man? All right. Yeah, yeah. I think I, think I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rework it. I'm going to rework it and... Shoot, man. I don't know. It is what it is right it is what it is hopefully i get a quad speed 
that would be cool. And I could probably put it on somebody like Armand's, right? Quad speed. Here we go. Crit rate. Not bad. What's the... Oh, fuck. Speed. Accuracy. Okay, here's the other thing. <laughs> I, got the, I got the other half. Instead of res, I got quad accuracy. That's not bad. Crit rate, though. I'm not a fan of crit rate on gloves either. I believe, especially as an endgame player, you should be getting crit rate from your substats, not from your glove. Always go with your first mind. I always go with my second mind. Because if you really wanted the first mind, you wouldn't have even considered the second. It's just like girls, right? Babe, I, I know you're here, but uh, ignore this part. But one of my old school mentalities was like, if you're choosing, if you have to choose between one or two, uh, two girls, right? You always go with the second one. Because if you really wanted the first girl, you would have gone with her. And you wouldn't have even, you wouldn't have even considered the second girl. Honestly, yeah, I'd say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Synth. I'd say it's more useful. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm, I'm going with what you said. Centrano soft piece glove. Yeah, exactly. But I, I love you, babe. I love you. I love you. What are you talking? I love you. But yeah, I, I apply that to a lot of things in life. Like if I, if I really want something, I'll just go for it. But there you go. That's your chaos or. Random hits and hex. I'll admit I've been playing for a few years, and now that I'm using Mithrala, I'm wondering about this. How do random hit attacks like Ninja's A2 or Kale's A3 work with hex? Are they considered single target or AoE? It says in the description, for Michinaki, it can trigger his A1 to, uh, against a single hex opponent. He's, uh, th this is the answer right here. Um, hex, for you guys, if you don't know, if an enemy has hex on them they're going and you attack somebody else, Anybody with the Hex debuff is going to receive a percentage of the damage. So yeah. Very cheap Wixville CB. Let's see, what is this? I'm going to dive into this since I don't really... I don't know anything much about the CB comps for Wixville. Alright. Less than 6 months account was doing 20 mil NM clan boss and now I'm doing 110 NM. 6 keyed to open uh, UNM for my clan. Oh, he did 6 keys to open UNM. Did 86 mil on UNM on auto. That's pretty cool. Uh, second try after fixing Hellborn's defense. Same speeds for both NM and UNM. That's pretty nice. One key, both are auto. I'm not good at this game. Got lucky on my speed tune. Works for both. Just want to share. Edit. These are booked. So maybe not a cheap Wix will. All books are for the three-turn extender. Not everybody has full masteries. Just Wix and Haikatoon and FB. Valerie and Hellborn have 90% mastery. So speeds. Lead with Aura. Haikatoon at 165 speed. Wix will in reflex gear. 205 FB. In, uh, by the way, shout out to FB. Frozen Banshee is an awesome damage dealer for clan boss. 222 speed. Hellborn sprite in a shield set at 168. Valerie in a shield set at 198. Those are pretty easy speeds, by the way. This is not, this is not a hard team to build. According to these speed tunes. Haika tune. These are the pieces of gear. 37 shout out to you. Look at that. Now, if you're... As much of a dick move it is to say, if you're already doing UNM and NM, I would leave this clan. I would leave this clan. Because for your... for your Oh, no, he's the leader of his own clan. Never mind. Never mind. He's the leader of his own clan. First, the first discussion is if you're doing UNM or NM already, you should leave whatever clan you are in currently if they're not already providing the um, the death of the clan boss for NM and UNM. Like, join a clan that's appropriate for your uh, skill level because if not, you're going to be holding your account back in the long run. This guy is the leader of his clan. I personally don't think you should be starting your own clans. It's way too late in the game. It's way too late in 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 raid to be uh, starting new new clans. I'd say join a join a clan that's already established. I'll make room in my clan if he needs a clan if he's active. There you go. Um, so yeah, it, tweak thirty seven. If you're watching this, AG's got you. Help with general stat values. Hey there, champs. I'm trying to figure out adequate stat goals for all champions. Doing extensive research. Not sun. Not so extensive, about 50 posts and comments read. Managed to get some information. Uh, Pav, Pave content? 
Accuracy 250, 350 for Doom Tower, speeds 200 to 225, 250 speed. Wait, what is he asking? Please help me. I'm lost as souls. It's dangerous to go. Yeah, it's dangerous to go alone. Mostly paved dungeons. Trying to figure out. There is no such thing. Yeah, um, I guess he's asking, like, what's the general best stat thresholds that people should be going for? And to be honest, there is none. It it really honestly depends on what you're what you're going for, because there are different speed tunes for uh for for like the clan boss. Even if you're not doing an unkillable team, there's gonna be speed tunes for that. And there's you know Hydra's got its own thing. Dungeon teams have got its own thing. Arena's got its own thing. So it really depends on what you're going for. You kind of just have to know your champion, have a good general idea of what the area is that you're uh, working towards. Uh, part of it is gathering information and knowledge, asking people who are ahead of you, and also asking, um, I guess, other people, but very specific, uh, other people in like Reddit or the community, but you got to ask very specific questions. So instead of asking for general stat values for the entirety of the game, which is really hard to give, I'd, I'd probably say something like, oh, what is a good speed to have for Hydra? And somebody might tell you like, okay, uh, and even that has differences, right? So for me personally, for Hydra, your nukas, your damage dealers, I'm going to tell you 220. But the faster you can go, the better. And for support champions, minimum what I'm going to tell you is 240 speed, but the higher, the better. And everybody's going to tell you differently. It kind of just depends on, on who's around you and what you can attain. But those are the, you know, it, it, it really just depends. So I, I get what he's asking for now, but I'd specify it. Just curious about Primal Shards. Is there any reason why Polarium... And by the way, about the Hydra uh, stats, someone else who probably knows more than I do will probably is, is probably going to tell you a, a different um, speed threshold. Somebody who is not so far progressed in the game than I am will probably give you a different stat threshold also. So it really just depends. Do your research. Always, always, always test it out first and then see what works best for you. Now that I've had a bit to stew on it, I think I can see the value of the Incarnate, but not for late game players, only for early to mid game. That's probably why they chose this champion for them. Yeah, probably. Is there any reason why Polarium doesn't want to take rares <laughs> from the Primal's summoning pool? Not gonna lie, it pisses me off that I collected Primal shards from the daily logins these past few months, waiting for this event, and now I mostly got rares and a bunch of epics. I don't mind epics, but really? Rares? Yeah, really. What's the answer? Money. It always boils down to the bottom line. And I can't even be mad at, at Polarium, to be honest. I, whenever they pull like a money stunt, a greed stunt, I can't be mad at them. You know why? Because it's in their nature. It's in their nature, guys. Entities, some companies, it's in their nature to do these things. So you can't really be surprised. You can't be um, mad at them, really, for participating in something that you already know and are very well aware of you know, the it's just the nature of the beast. It's the nature of these beasts. So money. When it comes to Raid, when it comes to Playroom or any big corporation, it's always going to boil down to that. Sorry if I didn't articulate that story, that parable well enough. I got distracted. If they gave epics, legendaries, and mythicals, then they would be better. Oh, better than Sacred Shards. Can't read. And cost 20 each instead of 5. So yeah, money. Yeah, that's true. Primal better known as Red Ancients. Pricing psychology, sell them cheap, even with crappy rates to make more money selling the expensive and with higher rates. Primals are just ancient shards in disguise. Yeah. We're, yeah, yeah, easy, money, the greed. We're making so much money, yes, but we can make even more money off these dummies. I'm not surprised at all either. I've been playing for about three years and you learn that very quickly, yeah. Exactly, so, I mean, like I could sit here and be mad about it but honestly like i'm the one participating in it and the only way to get a big company to change is to not participate and not spend money in whatever it is that they're they're peddling to you that's how you best handle it because you can complain all you want but the companies aren't going to listen you know what the companies listen to the numbers that's what they care about i take i take it you know i take back i i, I step back from the game here and there i i, I don't really spend in raid anymore uh just because i've got other things going on but yeah with a minuscule chance of getting anything else other than a rare or an epic, yeah. I'm not a fan of it, honestly. It's not like they make Primal Shards so readily available. 
and like arguably the best champions in raid like almost every mythical champion is really good right Frolny, Frolny, mythical vault keeper hey guys primals have been good or bad to me i got a Frolny. he doesn't look particularly useful anywhere what have you guys been using him for and what degree of success who's Frolny? who's Frolny? is he a dwarf he sounds familiar it is him yeah uh from what i've heard i know somebody in my my discord who has frolny and he's not a fan he's not too much of a fan i mean he looked cool he looked cool but uh yeah no no uh let's just run this real quick in the background Second shield set for new Wixville team. Okay, ready for my six, first six. Returned recently to the fold. Been away. Who should I six star next? He's got Rotos. I'd be maxing Rotos out. Angar. Truoth. This guy's pretty good. I don't use him anymore, but um, I've seen him putting in some good work. Yannicka. Karato is not the best nuker, but he can nuke. Shazar. Lana Theral actually is probably going to be my pick just because of the ally protect or ally attack. There's one or two mythical champions that are questionable whether or not they're good for a mythical champion. I, I feel like every mythical I've seen is pretty good, except for this cock. Like when he first was was uh, released, and I saw him on Scratch's video, he looked pretty good, but I know he got nerfed. So yeah. Is Ray down? Hey, uh, yeah, probably. What are the summon events I should be saving my shards for? That's a lot. Got five? <laughs> yeah. Definitely maxed out Cadaver for infinite shield. Joking, obviously. There's currently a Primal 2x event, and I read here and somewhere else that we should be saving our shards for certain summoning events. I'm level 42, still a new player. Only started a month ago, so I was curious what events should I be saving for. Before I read their comments, I'll let you guys know. You should generally always save for 2x events or the 1 plus 1 events which is like a pseudo 2x event I, I i think but i would be more so inclined to save and pull for the 1 plus 1 events if you know that you're close to mercy so like if there's a 1 plus 1 event and um it's for sacred shards and you're fresh off mercy I probably would I, I would probably save for 2x, but if you're like 10 deep into Mercy, then I would probably pull shards for the 1 plus 1 event. Those are the best best times. Yeah, play it safe, only use it when there's a 2x going on, especially for mythicals. I pull sometimes off of a 2x just because I feel like pulling and I, I often do whatever the, whatever I feel like doing. But it's not always the best time to to pull. Like right now, for an example, um if I were to pull If I were to pull a bunch of ancients, it probably wouldn't make sense because there's there's not a 2x right now. So it doesn't make sense for me to go ahead and do a 10 pop. You know what I mean? Uh, the best time to do it is definitely during a 10x. You don't want to do what I'm doing and just pull uh, during uh, when it's not a 2x. The ner they nerf cadaver, but it can still smack like a truck. Exactly. Yeah, because more than likely, you're not going to be able to uh, pull a Legor like the chances are... Are a lot lower now the other argument is i am moving closer to mercy so there is that but yeah i would definitely refrain from pulling when there's not a 2x event especially for something like uh blue shards definitely don't want to be doing that let's get in this other faction wars here real quick But yeah, save for 2x, always save for 2x. Yeah, we're all saying the same things here. Help. Oh, I love when people say help. Is it possible to go from level 40 to 50 in about 14 days of grinding? Yes, it is. To grind 12-6, which is the best place to get account XP. 40 to 50 in about 14 days. I will say yes. Now, I've done Chronum three times. I've done the Chronum uh, referral program three times. <laughs> um, I probably never will do it again. Just because it's such a hassle. But yeah, I think it's definitely possible if 
you just get like really lucky with energy. Like let's say you you come in and Polarium's just giving out freebies. So they're giving out a lot of energy. There's that. Spending every single gem. Uh, you know, and you're like running RSL helper 24-7. I definitely think you could do it in 14 days, maybe even less. For one account from 40 to 50, you definitely could do it. Um if you're really pressed for time, I might even consider doing the the forge pass if they have it and the the battle pass i think what is it they got the forge oh the raid card yeah do the raid card do the forge pass because you get bonuses from xp and i believe that helps out for the account the best outcome with infinite shield cadaver team is now you have a counter attack yeah like valkyrie to maximize the potential yeah exactly so there's that um depends on the energy you have if you're only grinding it's possible just let auto clicker auto exactly same thing so yeah, it's possible. Help with tag team. No, thank you. How to make a six second campaign farmer. He can clear in 11 to 15 seconds. If he can hit hard enough. So like the thing with the Fellhound is, right? Cause I tried building Fellhound as a six second farmer. And if you don't get him to hit hard enough, then he's not going to calculate 12-3 as killable or 12-6, wherever you want to put him. He's not going to uh, calculate the enemies as killable from one hit so he's going to start using his other moves now his other moves do things like um what do you call it i think he does like a, a shield or a provoke or something I, I forgot but basically what you want him to do is use his a1 so you need to make sure he's hitting hard enough high enough attack high enough crit damage first of all you need 100 percent crit rate it's essential else it'll be completely random then you need enough attack damn or oh, that's right he he's based off of damage as well, crit damage to one-shot every enemy. Speed is not really needed. 110 is enough, that's true, because you're going to be going faster faster than all the other champions. So you really only need a few sub stole rolls, glyphs, go for attack, or defense percent boots, ideally with crit rate subs. Exactly. He said it right here. Hellfound is consistent with 100% uh, 100 consistency with almost 3k attack, 3.5k defense, and 207 crit damage. That sounds about right. Sl possible slightly lower values might work. Possible, but that for me... Just eyeballing it, I feel like that's um, that's like right on the edge of it. Heal and block damage. He does it in about six seconds. This is him info day. That's his name in Portuguese. Yeah, so he's got less crit damage than the other guy, and he's able to do it. So that's cool. Demitha the goat against Dreadhorn? Is Demitha good for Dreadhorn? I didn't know that. Or what is wait no, because all the damage is coming from Demitha. I thought Demitha doesn't hit hard. Unless she's soloing. You can solo with Demitha? I need Jesus to get past Silver 3 for tag team arena. <laughs> I didn't know Demitha could solo. Her A3 is straight up a note button to the bomb. Oh, her unkillable, her, her block damage thing. She doesn't get mentioned a lot because Chi strat exists. Yeah. Uh, Samar gem curse. You need a lucky. You need a lucky still with one turn block damage. Any any two turn block damage champions are better. Upgrade. Helicath is the upgrade over her. That's still cool. I didn't know you could cheese Dreadhorn with uh, Demetha. New player promo code. Hello, I started playing and I wanted to ask. Of course, we all love free champions. How could I use it on the max? I've already used the new player promo code for Wukong, which is a great boost. Yeah, probably one of the best um, giveaway champions. Let's see. Can I also use the code for Mordecai or Wukong? No, you can only use one. Are there any more ways to get free champions? Uh, stick around long enough and play and we'll give it out. I saw some ad telling me I can get two free epic champions, but I know I have no idea how. You can only use one uh, champion promo code for a new account. Download, uh, to my to my knowledge, strategy is the key. Tyler Pickens, what's up, bro? How doth be fair? How are you, dude? There's also the Amazon Prime ch 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 champ campaign champ yeah, campaigns, yeah. Public service announcement. If your game client is downloading files very slowly after a patch, kill RSL helper. You're welcome. Thank you. Who should I level next? A Cavalax is a nice champion. He's got a plus two relic keeper. That's insane. Crocodile. 
and whoever this is. Pretty nice, Nogdor. Definitely Krokmar, that's his name. Krokmar. Just uh, done doing a little streaming. Oh, you stream, bro. I didn't know you were a streamer. But then again, I don't really get a lot of people coming into my streams or, or my comment section telling me that they do anything. So I guess that makes sense. And I guess it's kind of like an unspoken thing because like I don't go around to other people's streams either and promoting myself. Even if it's like a slight chance that it could be perceived as a potential promotion thing. I see that. Yeah, you never told me you streamed or anything. What were you streaming? Were you doing raid? You do raid, bro? CB help. Do it. Look at this Wixwell clan boss team hitting the turn limit. 242 mil. That's pretty nice. Geopancer, dude. With a level 30 marked. That's the archer. Oh, the, the champion back here. Yeah, she looked pretty cool, I remember, from what I when she first got released. The new Hydra hero. Archer is great for Hydra. Nice. Probably. Uh, oh, he's, he's got her at 60 already. That's not the Archer. Who are you guys talking about? Authorion? Didn't she have like a shield thing? Everybody's got a shield nowadays. Deck of Fate giving me another reason to want Queen Eva even more. Look at this, guys. Congrats. Attack Banner. Probably re-roll this. Triple speed. I like it. I like it. Who should I six star? Everybody's always asking, who should I six star? And it's always hard to give you a definitive answer because it's just like every account's going to be different. It also depends on where you're at in the game. Dude, he's got two mythical champions. This guy smacks. Actually, both of these guys, Geralt smacks too, dude. I've gone up. I haven't done live arena in like two months or something like that. But um, yeah, these guys hit hard. Thanks, man. I'll have to drop it in Discord. I wouldn't call it consecration. It's more like, damn, that champion looks cool. Yeah, for sure, bro. And that's okay. You know, uh, when it comes to YouTube, a lot of people who teach YouTube will say something along the lines of find your find your niche. And here's the thing about doing raid content, right? Um, and you're speaking from my own experience, there's not much that that I can do in terms of providing content other than entertainment value. Like, if you look at my content, yeah, I've got champion guides and I've got a bunch of dungeon guides as well. But lately I've been feeling like there's not much I can do in terms of that realm. Like, I enjoy, I still enjoy doing champion guides and it's cool whenever I get a cool dungeon team. But there's so many, uh, there's so many content creators that can do that content that there's no real need and I don't really feel an inclination to do, to do that. But then again, I enjoy doing whatever I want to do. So like right now, I'm just reacting to whatever I see on, on Reddit posts. And I like commentating. I enjoy genuinely just going down this list and seeing other people's um, questions, their woes, and seeing what people are talking about. Like you can do whatever content you want. Don't stress too much about trying to, um, you know, find whatever it is that you're going to be known for and raid. It's cool if you do. It's cool if you can bring something new, but I wouldn't stress too much about it. So just do it. It's hard to suggest upgrading a champion when you don't know the individual's needs. How are you struggling with tag team? I'm confused. It's probably a gear issue, to be honest. This is solid. Arbiter with Pythion and Armands with Leorius. That's solid. Um, This team right here, I probably would change. So he's got, he's got Emic. But in order for this to pan out the way he wants it to which I'm imagining he... The way I see this happening, right, is he's got Nekmothar going first, probably going to be the fastest champion. He's trying to go fast, but this is still not going to outspeed a lot of teams. I'd be hard-pressed to find uh, a lot of teams that are going to lose to this. Because ideally what you want to happen is you want this team to go first, Emic places the taunt to lock out the other side from doing anything quite yet. But you're going to get outsped. This is a speed battle for this. I'd probably put in... Does Yash Yashrid's a really fast champion, right? Maybe like a really fast Yashrid. Or he could go a go second, do a go second team. But you'd have to change out the... Oh, fucking put um, Tormin in. I'd put Tormin in. Yeah. To beat out speed teams. I'd say like a Tormin would be pretty good. Change out... Um... I might even take out Nekmothar. I'd probably take out Nekmothar, put in Tormin. That way, if anybody does try to outspeed you, there's a high chance they get frozen. 
Deacon. Oh yeah, Deacon's a good option too if you can make Deacon really fast. Podrick, I like Podrick. Podrick and Armands go well together hand in hand. I was using Podrick with Harim Harima, and this is not bad either. But I think it's gonna boil down to just gear. You have Baron. You know what? I, I thought I was gonna be using Baron a lot more. I don't really use Baron. I don't really use Baron for anything. Necmo. Oh, you have a uh, Necrit. Why don't you have Necrit on your on your team here? I'd definitely be putting a Necrit. Probably Necrit and pair it with somebody who's got because uh let's see. Low HP, low HP, low HP nukers, low HP nukers anywhere. Yeah, so I'd figure out a nuker to pair with, and then Snake Shack's pretty nice. Everybody needs a deke. Yeah, everybody needs a deke. Clan boss help. Clan boss help. Fun Valk debuffer. Dude, I hate this guy. Val Cannon is such a dick, dude. Have you guys fought this guy yet? They got better arena champs than you do? It's one of those things that it, it just happens with time. Raid question. If I use a mythical tome on a legendary, bro. You're new to raid, aren't you? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. If you use a mythical tome on a legendary champion, how many skills does it do? It does one. Do not use a, le a mythical tome on a legendary champion. Yeah, never skill down with books. Never use an epic on a rare. Never an Allego. Um, yeah, just don't do it. Don't don't do that, guys. Don't. Yeah, exactly. Look at this. Don't do that. They're not easy to come by. Like, how many mythical books do I have right now? I've only got 15 right now. Granted, I'm not pulling any mythical champions, so. Definitely don't do that. <laughs> Remnant summon question. Never use mine. You have a two. Two questions. Would they count towards the deck of fate? Has there or will there be will there be any extra chances chances for mythicals? Uh, 2.5% base. If it ever doubles, I'd love to wait. They're probably not going to double that. Because 2.5 in Polarium's eyes is already pretty high. Want your Dag Mythical, pull all your Primals today, and of course nothing. They've never done a Remnant um, event. Save them for CVC. No, they do count for Champion Chase, though. Oh, so no, they don't count towards the Deck of Fates, but they count towards Champion Chase. There has not been an event in the last six months since Remnant summons were released. It's unlikely that they ever will be. Yeah. Boy, I made that mistake early on. You're not the only one, bro. I used... Who was it? I forgot who it was, but I actually used a legendary tome on an epic champion in my early days of raid. Big mistake to do, but I did it. Never again, though. Do I have... Oh, I have a primal... Or not primal, freaking prism thing. Give me a Rodos. Give me a Rodos. Come on. I'm actually not... You know, it's, it's whatever. Farrakhan and the Fat can get it. I mean, oh, oh, pause. Farrakhan the Fat can get the empowerment is what I'm trying to say. I said Farrakhan the Fat can get it. It's not what I meant, guys. There we go. Let's plus, let's plus two him. <laughs> Imagine you're heading out. It's midnight here. Take care. Catch you next time. Hey, AG, thank you so much for hanging out. Have a good one, bro. Imagine using Mythic Book on a rare. Oh, my God. Imagine that. Hey, yo. Guys, I said Farrakh and the Fat can get it. I only have eight myth mythical tomes. Yeah, definitely save those. New Blessing for Poison Sensitivity. What is this? New Blessing Divinity of Harmony is making a greater version of all the debuffs. Use it on theater. Oh, you know what? That's right. They did talk about the new blessings that are coming out, right? Are they out yet? Where's the, How do I check? I feel like as a content creator, an official content creator, there's a lot that I should be knowing, but I just don't. Hold on, I think I have it in the official raid server somewhere. I haven't gone over the the new blessings that are coming out. Okay, here we go. Uh, Divinity blessings. All right. So we have uh, Nourish. For rares, increases the value of heals granted by continuous heals. Placed by this champion. Each continuous heal... Uh, restores a portion of the target's max HP destroyed. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I could see that having legs. Up to 30%. 
destroyed um and that's pretty cool because right i think for the longest time there was only like two champions that naturally restored destroyed max hp podrig and michinaki or not marishka and then they have the blessing the emergency heal or was it the other one I think my most common mistake early, early game was using Bruise on a champion and not using their specific affinities. Yeah, I made that mistake too. But now if you have this blessing, as long as you have continuous heal, it kind of opens up the doors for restorage of max HP destroyed. Let's see, Nature's Bounty. Whenever this champion applies a debuff, has a chance to place a greater version. For example, decrease res instead of... Or 50% instead of 25 decrease res does not apply... Uh, to, debuff, to debuffs placed by gear sets. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but it's mostly going to be for newer players, I think, because just me personally, I don't see myself using rare champions to try and do uh, this specific thing. Divinity of Harmony, Nature's Wrath, increases the damage inflicted by this champion for every debuff they successfully placed, except debuffs placed by gear sets. So I was watching, uh, do you guys know who the content creator Senda Plays is? Yeah, so Senda uh, is somebody I, I support. I watch him. And he actually did a video. Yeah, here. Cambiar en el meta. Nuevas bendiciones. Um, and he was actually talking about this specific blessing, and it kind of stood out to me. Yeah, so if you have a champion that places a debuff, then increase the damage. And one of the champions that he noted, and... I only put note in my head for this because uh, I used this champion, Rathalos. So he was talking about uh, using Rathalos as a potential champion to put that type of blessing on. But yeah, I remember him talking about that blessing. So yeah, there's that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody like Farrakh and the Fat, who places even more debuffs, will be able to do more damage. Now, I don't know if that's something... Like, I, what I use... Was it? Where did it go? Would I use Nature's Wrath over Heaven Cast? Not sure yet. I'd have to dive in and test it. Neutralize has a chance to place debuffs on weak hits when attacking enemies under poison clouds. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Hydra, obviously. Harmonic Impulse fills the champion's turn meter whenever they lose a turn because of fear or true fear debuff. That's nice. Also decrease the cooldown of a skill they attempted to use whenever their turn is lost due to a true fear. Yeah, I could see that being a cool thing. Uh, resets the cooldown of the attempted use. Fills the champion's turn meter by 50%. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to imagine how that would be in Arena. Because I, I know, like, if I go up against a Lydia in Arena, my Taurus oftentimes will just get straight up uh, feared. So that can be an issue. But I'm not going to put Harmonic Impulse on him for that. Cracking Roots increases the damage inflicted by this champion to Stone Skin. Oh! Increases the damage on a 6-star Blessing by 100%. So basically, Stone Skin is getting a potential pseudo-nerf. Is that my understanding to this? Increases damage to Stone Skin. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, they're all welcome. Especially the um, the rare ones with the healing mechanics involved, that that's a pretty good pretty good um, addition in terms of blessing. As I was I was always wondering what they were gonna do for um, that last section. How to Hydra? Oops. Level sixty five free to play. Starting to take Hydra seriously. Good. Top chest and normal. Want to push to hard Hydra. Get the Hydra chest. So. Um, when it comes to Hydra, I'm going to say the same thing I've always been saying. Just put a bunch of nukers in, and it always does well. Now, I don't know if that's just me talking out of my ass, because I'm an endgame player, and I've just been playing for a while, so it's easy for me to become disconnected from most of the community. But I would just recommend a lot of nukers. However, now that I'm looking at his kit, I don't see a lot of nukers. So this is going to be one of those things where it's just like, bro, you might have to come back. But let's see, let's see what we can do here. I do see you have a Geomancer. Geomancer would be pretty good. And I really 
actually remember using Geomancer back then, even for Brutal, because he would, um, you know, with his passive, reflect some of the damage onto other Hydra heads. And it was cool because the head that steals debuffs could be targeted. You know how whenever you try to target that specific head and you get redirected because there's an 85% chance to get redirected? Well, Geomancer was able to place the HP burns on that specific champion regardless, so it was pretty nice. So I would probably think to use Geomancer. I don't know what your current team looks like. You have two Geomancers, so definitely use two Geomancers. I'm assuming that you're already using Emic and Deacon in there. Definitely be using them. I don't know about Armand's. Rathalos, Wixwell, probably. Yeah, but you're not... I don't see too many options here, man. Yeah, you're probably gonna have to wait a bit. Probably gonna have to wait a bit. Uh, Infinity Shield. Best blessing for Lazarius. I don't have him. Free gift. What should my core team be early into mid? Yeah, so uh, this question here, core team. This is basically early on to mid game when you first start playing raid. You're going to have basically one team that's gonna be the go-to team for pretty much every content. All the dungeons, you're, you're gonna be using this, this team. So for him... I would say you're going to want to build out Apothecary, right? He doesn't have one. So Apothecary is probably going to be somebody you're going to use. Kale for sure. I don't know about Adeline because I haven't really used her yet. Probably Hykatoon is going to be in there. Is Kree is good? I haven't used them before. Argument could be made for Armager because of the enemy max HP early on. So probably Armager. That's four. And you might even want to consider putting in El Hain for your fifth. And that might be the core team you want to run with early on. Not a lot of options here. You could put in... Um, who is this guy? This lizard? He heals, right? I don't remember if he revives. I find it odd that we haven't had a gear set that puts up HP burns yet. Bro! We've been talking about this. I put out a video talking about, um, remember, hey, Joe Kane, good morning, man. Bytem uh, came out with a champion. He made his own champion, a mythical champion, and I put it out, I put a video out, out on it. Uh, pretty well received. And in that same video, on top of the champion that we talked about, we talked about a gear set, a gear set that places, that places HP burns. So this is, a, you know, the same thing. It seems like a low-hanging fruit for a set. On a more general note, at this point in the game's life cycle, it's time to move on entirely from the sets that only provide a single stat boost. Espe yeah, especially like the basic life attack crit rate. Phase those out entirely or upgrade to the divine version, bring in new sets instead of constantly adding and adding. Stat distribution provides enough RNG to satisfy their coffers. Yeah. Joe Kane, how are you doing this morning? Good morning. It's night time for me over here. Currently um, 2220. The Ice ice Golem Dungeon Reward sets need to be revisited. Underwhelming sets, yeah. Um, if we could get a set that places HP burns, it would be pretty cool because we could... A lot of the player base, especially those that don't have somebody like a Mordecai or Geomancer, would have access to HP burns. So things like Spider early on would be a lot easier. You're doing well. I'm glad, man. Blizzard Doubt, how I wanted to know if Blizzard can solo Sand Devil with level one blessing. I don't think so. If yes, can you share the stats in the sets? No, it needs to be five or six, so that's protected. Otherwise, it's gonna be cleansed off. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure this could still work because I did um I did a uh, a video showcasing Padrig going up against the Sand Devil. And granted, he was with um what's her name? Godseeker and Eerie. But the run took like 35 minutes to do. So you definitely want to have, to make it more accessible, to make it more realistic, you want to have your five-star blessing. Can anyone share an actual Ashnix stat? All the videos... I've, blah, blah, blah. Dark Fae. All the videos I've seen, cheese it. It doesn't work on hard. You seem to be doing just fine with it, though. Here's a post I made. Lady Kimmy will help. Full team by Farb stuff. Yeah. There's a that's an option too. 
One key Wix will clan boss team, all clan boss teams. Lady Annabelle Bomble farming, uh, failing. I've never used her, so I can't help. Beginner help. Just got Demitha. Wonder if we're really unlucky. <laughs> is this a good champion or not? In raid, or if raid in our dreams hosted a select legendary event, who would you pick and why? If only. So many people wants nuts. I uh, wanted nut. For the record, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Newt. It is. It is pronounced Newt. I'm still going to say Nut. This right here. This is a good option. Nergigante Archer. That would be probably one of my picks. Because I went hard. Only get only gets outdone by a, a Kraken. That's the Hydra guy. Yeah, exactly. That's the Hydra guy. Wallmaster. Still need a Krisk. Venus. Who would you guys pick? If you could pick one legendary champion and automatically just have it show up in your account, who would it be? Or Gnut? Yeah. I'd probably pick Nergigante Archer because uh, she's just so nice. She's such a nice Hydra champion. And I lost the champion training event for her, so it's it's been a sore subject. And I since I, since then, I haven't really like dove in to raid like I used to since that event. I think that kind of burned me out completely. So I'm taking a huge break. Muhammad, how are you doing? I have Nut, want Ronda, MMA era, era. Yeah. Ronda's a pretty pocket champion. Pretty good champion. Help, please. Dark face seems impossible. Let's see. So you have Royal Guard. That's good. Neldor is potent. Dude, you could definitely do it. You have Allure. Two Allures, right? Royal Guard. Stagnite. And um, Cold Heart. You could definitely do it. It's just a gear issue, and it's a matter of um, trying to make sure that you you do what you 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 know the strategies. So you know you you set up your team right. You definitely want to build up your lures with a lure. You're gonna want to start off with her A two. Open with A two, and then close out the A two when you first get to the Dark Fey. And you want to open with Royal Guards A two to smash the other team. You're also going to want to, uh, you know, depending on your gear, if you need to smash through again, then use Cold Hearts A2. But at this point, from what I'm imagining, is you're probably going to be, it's just going to be you against um, the Dark Fae at this point. So two Allures, Royal Guard, Cold Heart, and probably Stagnite. Uh, make sure you get the Masters to push back turn meter. As long as you get Allures fast enough, I think the minimum speed is like 251, and you have enough accuracy... You could definitely get this going. You can get it to the point where Dark Fae can't even take a turn. And with Cold Heart and Royal Guard, it's going to be a matter of time before the EMHP moves kick in. And yeah, easy clap, to be honest. Don't overcomplicate it. Just get the, get the stats right. I guess that's easy for me to say, huh? Oh yeah, Xena would be pretty good. Just one, give me a good nuker. Rodos. Rodos is my favorite champion so yeah i'd probably get into the rotos to plus three or xena for flavor <laughs> xena for flavor hey just just for uh to add to your uh collection of uh, old school nostalgia have i discussed incarnate already yes what was the verdict was late to the stream no worries the verdict for incarnate was easy pass and i don't see any player newer to endgame that could honestly fully benefit she's such a weird champion with applications that don't really fit anywhere well like the best she can do from another reddit post that we just read was that she uh can bring back arbiter but arbiter's synergy with her doesn't really it, like it doesn't fit too well because arbiter wants like a fast going team but incarnate doesn't really fit that agenda so yeah it's a little weird but it's also kind of a good thing right because we can skip we can all take a two-week break from doing any events unless unless they pump out some event Unless that, that becomes the case. So who knows what Palladium's gonna do, but to me, it's an easy it's an easy break. But I've been taking a break regardless. You want Farrakhan the Fat, played with him on a friend's account, he gets busy. Bro does get busy. But over a Lego champion, I think if you needed an ally attack champion, you could pick something else. Like a Lanotheril, Cardiel. I use Cardiel. But yeah, Farrakhan the Fat would be cool, but if we're choosing a Lego champion, that's who I'd pick. Aphidius the Hive Lord. Is this guy good or not? 
Because I think I've used him once and he wasn't too impressive. DPS, he's okay. Pretend he's a legendary in his first form and beat up Hydra. Just pretend he's a legendary. Hydra DPS. First form is monstrous in long boss fights, especially Hydra. Build like an attack-based nuker. Shame his second form is pretty weak because it looks awesome. Yeah, he looks awesome, but... Yeah. In PvP, damage dealers with built-in ignore defense is too strong. Those traditional nukers are too weak. Yeah... But also, that's also the allure behind having those specific champions. Yeah, Cardio would pair great with Sishia. I think they're kind of needed in order to not have a constant stalemate meta. Yeah, exactly. With throwing in UDK, Elva, Duchess, Mariska comps that can never be killed. I prefer the way Harima handles those defense tank teams, though. Over a long fight, she'll drop their defense by 30 permanently and buff her own damage out uh, by double. Yeah, Harima's great for it. Her A2, right? So Harima's A2 uh, decreases each uh, target's defense by 5% up to 30%. Also increases this champion's defense by 5 up to 100%. Awesome, awesome skill. Love Harima. Do you want matches to end or not? <laughs> yeah. Shrunda with Merciless has a 85% chance to ignore with Helm Smasher. She's still fine if she's the best you have. Rodos' kit is still still a little overpowered. You guys nerfed my dude like four times, and you're still saying he's overpowered? He is. Dear God, don't don't say that. Because then Polarium's gonna, Polarium's gonna catch wind and try to nerf him again. I don't need Rodos nerfed. How many primals did you guys pull without a mythical? I'm somewhere between 60 to 100. 66 total. Pulled on a 2x, zero mythical champions. Yeah, it's terrible. Meanwhile, other guys in my in my uh, discords are telling me that all they have like a bunch of uh, primal cha or mythical champions that they pulled, and I'm just like, damn. How much more powerful powerful do you think champions would be if every mastery could be unlocked? A lot more. Lucked out. Who should I concentrate on first? Vizix is pretty nice. Vizix actually does a lot of damage. I'd probably well a Kempton would unlock a lot of... Well, I mean, you have Seer also. I mean, you could solo with Burangiri. And then Venomage is pretty... It's kind of hard to say, really. Varric and the Fat also. But uh, probably Seer. Dungeon Wave Clearing would be the best. And then a Kempton would be pretty nice for a lot of other content. The only reason I'm ambivalent about saying Vizix from the, from the, off the rip is because of books, legendary books. Does anybody know what these special packs are? Deck of Fate. Foxy Mecco the Dragon Slayer? What is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the um, hard 10 dragon team. Because of Hex, you can reflect all the damage. So, yeah, that's what he's talking about. Redirecting all of it back. Oh, let's go back here. Dragon, three upcoming quality of life feature features. Free gear. Oh, yeah, we already talked about that. I make six star help. What? Button to turn off. Is it me or would it be nice to have flying text being turned off as an option? Oh yeah, for like the numbers and everything. I wouldn't mind that either. Probably an item you can buy for $5. Recruiting. Divinity blessings. Epic empowerment. Yeah. I'm, the blessings are okay. You know what I mean? Recruiting. Recruiting. Pull or save primals? I'd pull it. Does Brimstone need accuracy? If you have a 6-star blessing, then no. Right? I think you need a 6-star. Yeah, unless you have a 6-star. Google exists. Google will have answered this in one second. If you're not going to answer, why bother commenting? It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. I see that. What the hell is ruled 2-4? Had to run to the kitchen to make a burrito. Poblano peppers have been calling my name for a while. No worries, bro. Boss rebalance? What is this?
pretty shadow lit. Is, are the bosses getting reworked? Not soloing them all? Maybe that's an indication that they're reworking the max HP hits in general. They can't really make interesting bosses when you can kill them in a few turns thanks to max HP. Well, that's a waste of 43 seconds. Yeah, nut. G nut. I hope it doesn't mess up speed tunes for sure, yeah. We don't need boss reworks, we need customizable AI options. Why not both? Aniri strongly dominates the Sand Devil. Yeah, that's true. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not against the a rework for the bosses as well. One nut to rule them all. One nut to find them. One nut to bring them all and in darkness bind them. Someone's been watching Lord of the Rings. That's pretty nice. Age except for the heart. But don't they usually do free regear events usually around change time, like once once uh once a month now? And because of that, like when is when is this over? When is uh when is this reset? In a week? Yeah, usually in the last week of the cursed city of Centranos, they they do free regear events. And one hour isn't enough time, I think. You know how like if I were to sit down and really regear a lot of my champions, it's gonna take more than an hour. For a newish player perspective, 140 days in, this is good. Our strongest champion is reused almost everywhere. True. We don't have specific champions for Hydra CB arena. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. And that's why I like talking about these things with you guys, because like a lot of these things go over my head or I forget to remember what it's like being a relatively new player. I'm like a squirrel, I'll forget. Dude, I've got the I've got the memory of a goldfish myself. But really not possible to utilize since the cost. Exactly. If it if it costs millions, two million Every single time you want to regear, you know what I mean? What if the one hour item replaces the free events? That would be an issue. Wait, why am I here? Why did I come here? I was looking for a specific thing and I forgot what I was looking for. Oh, the boss rework, rebalance. Is this like new information to the point where we don't even know anything about it? I hope they hold true to what they say. I was holding back from making my God Seeker Ferric in the fat comp in case they make mess up the existing comp to the rework. I wonder if Polarium knows the trash rewards or why no one plays those bosses. If you're not endgame, that's what I was about to say. If you're not endgame, you need to focus more on gear improvements before farming materials to ascend your gear because ascending shitty gear will eventually, uh, that will eventually get trashed is a bad idea. Yeah. It's, yeah. That itself is not necessarily bad, but it more is, it adds more tiers of progress. Yeah. Because once you can farm everything, you're going to end up with a lot of Chaos ores. Or not chaos ores, but um dust. So you can rework things, but it's not really for, for newer players. Because once you get into deep into the end game, you're gonna get to the point where you're not really gonna be farming gear anymore. You're just going to want to ascend the gear that you already have, which is basically where I'm at. For the most part, all the gear that I have is what I want, I just have to ascend them. I just have to ascend them and get them to where I want them to be. Yeah, uh, same thing here with a uh, you know, trying to rework rework um, demon spawn or not the demon spawn the artifacts as well. But yeah, it's such an end game thing, right? Because or like even on on like. The regular, I think the more accessible team variation is Godseeker and Eerie and like somebody else. But even that takes somewhere between, depending on who you're using, two minutes to about five, six minutes. So that takes a while. And this is going to, no, no, I didn't. Sorry, I missed I miss a thing. I was like, well, why? what's about to go wrong? Yeah, but this is not available to a lot of people. Um, same thing with Phantom Shogun. My best time was 28 seconds. I'd, I'd argue that Phantom Shogun is a little bit easier to do. And it's uh, more accessible. I don't know why. It just feels a lot more uh, accessible to the player base. And I think it's because I've done a few videos, free-to-play champions or free-to-play teams for Phantom Shogun. But yeah, I think the biggest point that he made was like newer players aren't going to even feel so inclined to want to get those the ascension stuff because one you're not going to have access to all the quote-unquote free energy that they give out throughout the day 
And two, you're not going to be able to use it on good gear. It's just not going to be a thing. Because more often than not, you're going to be using it on gear that's crappy. So I am not the representative of the entire player base. So 